This was the Connecticut building at the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1904, and a lot of parts actually came from the Hubbard Slater Mansion in Norwich, Connecticut, which was built in 1760. The Hahn Museum was really almost an accident. It was in bad shape when we bought it, and when we started working on fixing it up, we just thought, well, Indiana art would be a nice way to decorate the wall, so we started buying Indiana art, and within a couple of years, we had other museums coming to borrow pieces from our collection, so we sort of decided over a period of time that we needed to think about a museum. In 2015, we donated the building and the grounds to the museum, 501c3. We're having more and more programming and trying to educate people in more ways, either through lunch and learn projects or through make and take. So we have days with each exhibit where they can come in and work with different artists and, and make something and take it home. So that, that keeps things kind of fun. Well, the Step into the Painting exhibition was a really wonderful exhibition. We picked about 25 paintings depicting things that were going on in Indiana in earlier times. And then we had a retired school teacher that got a pilot group of third graders. And she either made or bought costumes for each of the kids and took them to the farm at Prophet's Town and took pictures of them reenacting what was in the paintings. I worked 32 years in public education and I taught elementary students from fifth down to third. And through that, I worked with all types of children with all different needs and all different gifts and all different curriculum areas. When Mr. Hahn was getting this project ready, it was initially just to bring out new exhibits, new photographs, new artwork by famous artists that hadn't been on an exhibit in the museum. And he came to me and he said, oh, Mrs. Smith, would you help write the didactics? And I paused and I thought about it and I said, Actually, I don't want to write the didactics. I would rather to have children get involved in the museum. The younger we get kids interested in this kind of project, the more interested they will be later on in the arts and the performing arts. I selected the initial third graders by finding a class that would volunteer. We wanted this to be able to be adapted to other grade levels, other schools, regardless of the students' abilities and their interest in their gifts. They selected a painting, and they did it initially by picking numbers, who gets to go first and who would partner up. And they would pick it based upon what they thought would be appealing. And sometimes the students found things in the paintings that I didn't even see. The children did the research on the artist, they studied, and then they wrote didactics. We explained to them what the didactics were. We utilized standards for both third and fourth grade across several subject areas, both for language arts, visual and performing arts, even mathematics standards are written in. The nice thing about Indiana standards, they are vertically articulated, so even though the plans are written at third and fourth grade, they can be adapted clue up to eighth grade. Oh, and teachers are gifted. They'll be able to utilize it from a lot of different aspects, and they'll be able to add their own touches. Teachers have reached out to collect the lesson plan to see how it can be adapted to theirs. Those lesson plans are available by contacting Han Museum. The foam pictures will be loaned out to any classroom that wants them. These are famous artists by Steele and Williams and Weaver. As an educator, I've been humbled by this opportunity because when one retires, you don't know if you'll be able to impact students the same. When the exhibit went up and the kids were able to tour it and saw the final work, it was amazing. It's what you want to do, you want to continue to contribute. Anybody that volunteers wants to have their work make a difference to somebody else. And if we've made a difference to the classrooms and we've excited the children, if we've given them a historical perspective, both on the art and the community, and the different time periods, the culture activities that went on in Indiana, then we probably have done our job. Our goal was not just to look at the painting, but to step into it and to feel like they have become a part of the community and the time of which they studied.